Hey everybody. So today we have a surprise in store for you. We are going to be playing a game. No, not that kind of game. We are going to be playing a game that I like to call which I A is it? And we're going to be focusing today on ontologies or knowledge graphs. And you be the judge to see which one you think each of these interfaces are using. And on Thursday, we're gonna go over some of the examples and we're going to talk about the characteristics of both. So I hope you enjoy this, I hope you have fun, and good luck. Okay, so just keep in mind, I don't work for any of these companies. However, we are going to use these as examples to kind of pick apart what characteristics you can look at to identify whether something is using an ontology, a knowledge graph, or something else. So leave in the comments below if you want which you think each of these examples are. So with that, this is called Live Plasma. Live Plasma used to look a lot better than this, and I actually loved using this as an example. It's not so nice anymore. However, this interface is used to help you identify other artists that are similar to one another. So you can see I selected Pantera, I was looking at Slayer, and ultimately I was looking at Metallica, one of my favorite bands. If you are a fan, put it in the comments below. So here you're going to see that the circles are a little bit bigger, the lines are connecting the related, and if you click this button, you can listen to some of their music. So that's really all this tool is doing. So you guess, is this ontology, KG, knowledge graph, or something else? Okay, moving on, this is candidate number two. So if you don't know who Sir Francis Bacon is, there's a whole lot of data here for you to learn more about him. But essentially, this visualization's purpose is really to help understand the influences, the spheres of influence to Sir Francis Bacon as well as William Shakespeare, because some people theorize that Sir Francis Bacon and Shakespeare were one and the same. So this is what the interface is trying to prove out by showing who was influencing who. So you can go in and you can select anybody and you can see what their network looks like. You can see what kind of classes they were, judges, diplomats, so on and so forth. You can look at different time periods. And as you move through the graph, you'll be able to find more information. So now you guess. All right, so now we're on to candidate number three. Candidate number three is the linked jazz music. I also like jazz. So here you're seeing all of the different connections to Danny Barker or Nancy Wilson go in and listen to them. You can see the Wikipedia page and you can see how this person is related to other artists. So the intent for this graph is really just to make these interactions more explicit, making sure that you can see um, how people are related to each other in some way. You can look at different views. This one gives you uh, gender. You can see these little pockets that are in here. And you can see that there's a lot of blue and not a lot of red. So that tells me that there's quite a few men in the jazz community and not so many women. You can go in and see which artists are similar to one another and those are, you know, clustering them together like this. And then Fix just shows you the full network of people. Okay, this one is a little bit different. Now we're on to number four. So this is called the Atlas of Living Australia. So this one's really cool. You can go in and you can type in any flora or fauna. And when you click into the details, it actually goes through and gives you an overview with images. This is all crowdsourced. So these are real people in Australia logging things into this database. You can see a gallery of things. You can see the different names. You can see the different classifications. Now these are zoological classifications, probably one of the very first classifications. Different records describing this, so on and so forth. So you can go in and you can see 
where this specific plant has been spotted within Australia. We can zoom in and we can see it's pretty cool. There is a hot spot, it looks like, here in Queensland. But most of the time, this plant seems to grow on the coast. So you can actually see the classification here, which is the conservation status, which is it's not of a big concern because it seems to be growing well. There's a lot of different content here that you can dig into the description, the taxonomy and naming. Again, this is a zoological type of taxonomy. All the different information that you'd ever want to find out about this plant. You can also go in and review the interactive map where you'd be able to go in and dig into all of these details a little bit more. So the intent for this interface is to allow the conservation efforts and citizen science for the flora and fauna of Australia. It's actually a really great um, project. I really wish other countries had something similar to this. Um, and it's really educational as well as conservation focused. All right, so let's move on to the next. So this one you have to have a subscription for, so I'm not gonna show you exactly what it does. In a nutshell, what Quid does is it actually looks through different companies, articles, financials, and it kind of clusters similar things together so that you can find insights. And so this is what that clustering would look like, and it would also give you a percentage of how often these, these clusters are mentioned within the corpus that you are feeding into it. You can go in and check all of these out a little bit more if you want to have a really good guess as to whether this is an ontology, a knowledge graph, or something else. All right, so this one is from the New York Times. And when this first came out, when the pandemic really started, I thought this was very well done. And it's essentially a visual on how the virus actually spread. And so each of these dots are people, are clusters of people, and where the hub was. And so you can go through all the data. Um, as you go through the article, which is over here on the side, the image will change for you. Again, I will put all these links in below. So you can go and check it out all by yourself if you'd like. You can see how they're using the visual to tell the story. So looking at this, the intent is to first describe an event and how the interaction between people affected that event. And this is one that, again, I think it was very well done. So the intent is really educational and to make something visually interactive um, that is a very serious topic to, I think, help people get through it a little easier and to make the information more synthesized. Now we're to everybody's favorite shopping experience. Maybe. So we're on Amazon and you'll see that I'm looking at Bose noise canceling wireless Bluetooth headphones that are way, way, way too expensive for me. So let me go and look at what other things they could suggest. I go down, I can see what is frequently used together. Still doesn't help me because that is way out of my price range. I can see things that are sponsored, but some of these are much more in my price range. Okay, cool. So these are all sponsored, but they are related. So they're related in some way. And then more items to explore. So these are things that Amazon feels that I might be interested in based on what I am looking at. So the intent here is to help me find similar items that I would want to purchase with this item or purchase instead of that item. So what do you think it is? What's the IA behind all of this? Now LinkedIn. So here's me, that's me. Those are all my connections. I used to have more, but periodically I go through and connections that aren't really active or I don't know, I, I, I say goodbye to. <laughs> so here you're seeing newsletters that they are suggesting to me. You're seeing people that they are suggesting to me, and I can go through and actually see, you know, maybe why they are being suggested to me, okay? So 
This is interesting. The intent here is to help me find interesting people and content to connect with. Moving on. So here we're on Airbnb. So they have an experiences functionality where you can go in and type in what experience you want, where, and what date. So I put in Cape Cod, never been there. Sounds like a wonderful place if I could travel. And so going through, I can look at these different experience. Now these might be curated or these are just being displayed to me because I selected Cape Cod and that is using this as a filter. The intent here is if I was trying to find an Airbnb on Cape Cod, what are some things that I could do while I'm there? All right, next, I'm just on Google and I have done a search and I start to type in metallic and Google will suggest to me Metallica the band. You see, it tells me it's a band, Metallica. San Francisco Symphony, a 2019 film, fabulous CD, by the way, and a bunch of other things about Metallica. I can also look over here into what is called a knowledge panel. So it's a panel on, on the side. Google was one of the first to do this, so a lot of people are doing it now. And this gives me a quick fix on what Metallica is all about. So you can see additional links, you can see descriptions, and you can see other things that are similar. So what do you think it is? I think this one's pretty easy. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so now we're in something like Microsoft Academic. So here I did a search on the top author in the history discipline and they told me that it is this guy. I don't know what he does. I just know he's in the history di discipline as well as vaccination. That's very strange. I wonder if they're the same person. Ah, that might be a good question for another video. A lengthy video since people and data and trying to disambiguate, they're kind of complicated. Okay, so I am looking at Stephen Marsh and I am looking at all the publications. We can see nomenclature for the HLA system. Okay, so most of this looks like, this is, this is a good one. I'm going to come back to this. I didn't even anticipate this. So this has a ton of citations. It is almost all the same article, although these are two updates. They said this person was the number one person in history, although none of these articles are about history. In fact, this person only has three things to their name. Interesting. So if I wanted to go in and find out more about history and other similar things, I can do that over here. I can go over and look at the different topics. Again, one of these things is not like the other. I love this. I found bad data without even realizing it. <laughs> it also goes through the different authors and different journals and institutions. Okay, so what do you think this one is functioning off? Of? Next up, this is really cool. So um, if you don't know the pudding, they do some really cool data science and news article kind of uh, stuff, a lot of really cool visuals. So this one is the latest vocabulary in hip hop. So rappers rack, <laughs> Rappers ranked by the number of unique words used in their lyrics, which is actually really cool. So you can go in and read about how they did this. You can see on the spectrum, apparently NF uses about 2,400 unique words, whereas Aesop Rock uses about 7,800 unique words. And then there's a bunch of people all in, the, in between. So. This is really cool. I wonder how they did this. Actually, it tells you how they did this. If you're interested in reading more, the link will be uh, down below. Well, what do you think? What's the information architecture behind this? All right, so we are going to end this fabulous tour of data and cool visualizations, by the way, on, a, I guess, a positive note. Game of Thrones is not such a positive show, but a lot of people liked it. 
So if we're looking at the seven protagonists, you can actually go through and look at who was doing things with who, and I'll leave it at that, and who was mentioned the most and their interactions. And you can actually go through all the different volumes. So what's the information architecture? So you'll notice that a lot of these have similar visualization styles. Don't let that fool you. They don't all mean that they come from the same architecture. All right, so I hope you were taking notes because in Thursday's video, we are going to go through each of those and dissect whether we think something was an ontology, a knowledge graph, or some other kind of data structure. And let's see how you did. So with that, hope you enjoyed this. All the links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.